Have you been thinking it might be time to sell your home, but you just don't know where to even start? Stay tuned. I'm going to tell you how to prepare your home for sale. Cheers, good morning. I've got my favorite cup here and if you can see delicious espresso homemade in my cup. So I am ready to go and we're going to talk about preparing your home for sale. I'm Nora Spangler and I'm with Rogue Real Estate here in Bend, Oregon. And I talk about all topics about what it's like to live in Bend and buying and selling real estate here. So hopefully you'll find something of interest. If you like this video, please go ahead and click the subscribe button below and the little bell icon, and that will let you know when I do new videos, which is generally once a week. So if you're considering selling your home, you're probably thinking, where do I even start? So let's talk about it. I've got 10 points, 10 things that you can do to chronologically get your home prepared. So we're gonna start about three to four months out, and that's about the time that you should connect with a realtor and start talking about how to get your home prepared. And I wanna give you a little tip. If you stay and watch this video to the very end, I have a special offer. If you live in Bend or the Central Oregon area that I serve, I have a free offer for you. So stay tuned and I'll tell you how to get that. Okay, so the first thing you should do is get a binder or a folder because you're gonna to have to gather a lot of paperwork from the past, from when you purchased the home and you need a place to put it. So in this folder or binder, you need to put your original mortgage loan paperwork, your original sale contract, anything from the original purchase, gather those documents and stick it in this folder. Next would be your homeowner's insurance policy. Get that out, stick it in the folder. If you've refinanced this home, grab those loan documents too. Gather up 12 months of your utility bills because any buyer is going to want to know not just what this home costs to purchase, but how much does it cost to live in and how energy efficient is it. So we're going to create a summer and a winter average from all those bills that you gather. If you have a home warranty, get that paperwork too. If you've done any major repairs or remodeling, gather all that information. You don't have to have every single receipt, but just the major stuff, what you did, um, when it was done, and how much, uh, approximately how much it cost. And very important, if you pulled permits from the city, please include that information. And the last thing is, make a list of all the keys that you have. Keys are something that everybody just forgets about, and I find that when the transaction is closing, there's all these emails flying around. What mailbox number is it? Where's the key to the shed? You know, all that stuff. Okay, so number two is fix anything that you already know is broken or needs maintenance. If you haven't serviced your furnace and your HVAC in a while, go ahead and get that done. If you have a broken lock or um, light bulbs that are out or lighting fixtures that are broken, um, faucets that are leaking a little bit, whatever it is, call someone and get that stuff repaired or do it yourself but we don't want those nagging things um, coming up on your homeowner, on the buyer's homeowner inspection. Number three, if you're willing to do this and there's a lot of good reasons to do it, have a pre-sale home inspection. Don't get scared, okay? Yes, anything that you find out in this inspection, you will have to disclose to the buyers in your, your seller's disclosures. But you know what? They're gonna do an inspection anyway, so they're gonna find out all this stuff. And guess what? If you find out first, you have the negotiating power. Score! Yes, yeah, seriously, people. Really, a lot of people don't do this, but I think it's a great tool. You'll find out anything that really needs repairing, and you either can repair those things, or you can get an estimate, and then you can negotiate with the buyer. But at least you know what it will cost to fix them. The buyer is always gonna ask for more money than it really costs to fix anything. Even small things, they're like, oh, $500 for that, I want $300 for that. But if you know what it costs to fix them, then you're ahead of the game. 
So I suggest you do a pre-sale home inspection. Okay, number four is the challenging one. Declutter, depersonalize, and start packing. Okay, so now is the time to stop being emotional about this place you live. It's no longer going to be your home. You're selling it to someone else. So start thinking about it as a big giant asset, like a bank account, money in your pocket, okay? And it is going to put money in your pocket and it's going to get you where you want to go next. So that's the way you should think about it. And because of that, we need to depersonalize this space so that someone else can think about it as their next home, right? Number five is curb appeal. So this is your chance to make a great first impression, right? You only get one chance. Well, they've seen the pictures on the internet. Okay, that's your first chance and we'll talk about that. But when they drive up to the house and see it in real life, you want to make the best impression possible. So clean everything up, neat and tidy, sweep your porch, um, but don't spend a lot of money here. Okay, so we're about one month away from getting your home on the market. So what should you be doing now? Number six is landscaping. So just all the other landscaping, we talked about the front of your home, but you've probably got a backyard, side yard, you know, some other areas. So just make sure everything is mowed and watered and just looks good. You don't have to do, you don't have to add a lot of stuff or spend a lot of money. Just make it look the best it can for whatever season you are in right now. Okay, we're getting really close to the time your house is going to be put on the market. So what do you think comes next? Ah, uh, deep cleaning. Yes, deep cleaning. You've got to do it or pay someone to do it. And I'm seriously talking about get an old toothbrush out, clean the, um, the window tracks, clean the sliding door tracks. These are things that people notice. Make sure you get all the cobwebs from way up high and, um, you know, just really go over the house really well. Do it once, couple weeks ahead of the sale, you know, when your home is getting listed. And then from then on, it'll just be so easy to keep it clean because you can just do the light cleaning if you do the really deep cleaning now. Okay, so a couple weeks before your house goes on the market, you need to start preparing your family members. Maybe you've got kids or in-laws living with you. Um, also pets. So make a plan for when you have showings. What's the plan for your pets, your kids? other family members that may live at home, you need to have a plan for what's going, where they're going to go and what they're going to do when your home is being shown because it's really not appropriate to be there during a showing um, unless there's a big reason to, like maybe an ill family member or something and maybe they need to stay. But other than that, I really suggest that you vacate the home when the buyer's realtor shows the property. Okay, so the last thing that your realtor needs to do is take photographs of your home. So that's why you've been doing all this work leading up to this grand moment that photographs will be taken. And these are so important because where do people find your home and want to come look at it in person? They find it on the internet. Hello! And that means really great photographs, okay? So for me, I always hire a professional photographer and I'll have that appointment, I'll tell you when it is, and then you've gotta be ready for it. So that's really the last thing um, that has to take place before your home can go on the market. Okay, there's one more. It's a small thing, but it's actually a really big thing. And this is, you want your home to show really well when that buyer's realtor brings in potential buyers so before you leave for work or before any showings are going to happen that you're aware of, turn one light on in each room of the house and then take off and lock it. This will make a huge difference. And you can also open up the blinds, the shades, um, not the windows, but you know, just let all the light in that you possibly can, especially if it's winter and it's kind of dark outside. The more light in your home, it's going to bring you money, it's going to sell a lot better, it's going to show better, and you'll get great results. So, turn some lights on. 
Okay, special offer, bonus for those of you who live in my area, Bend, Redmond, Sisters area. I'm offering you up to 60 minutes of my time. I will come to your home and do an in-home consultation and we'll see what you need to do to prepare your home for sale. No obligation to hire me, no obligation to sell your home in any time frame, but just for your information to help you out. So I'm happy to do this. All you have to do is click the link in the video description below, and that will lead you to a page where you can put your email, phone, and your name, and then I will connect with you and we'll get that process started.